India has a very long tradition of filmmaking and uh, all of that we know. Now, but somehow in the late, uh, or in the mid 90s, we find that the agenda in Asia of being the leaders in filmmaking has been hijacked by Iran and China. And true, filmmaking. very true. But so and it is very sad, it is very sad too. Sad for the Indian filmmakers. Because Indian filmmakers and fallen, some of the Indian filmmakers, I wouldn't say, I would m not make any sweeping comment, but then quite a lot of people, very, very uh, courageous people, they, wa they were very courageous people at one time. Not only courageous, they were very sensitive at one time, but then they have fallen in love with big money. And that has created a lot of, made a lot of harm. That has done a lot of harm to these people. But I know Abbas, uh, the one who got the big prize in Cannes two years ago. And I know him, I know how he was making the films. I know, and then the other people in Iran, the three, four people, they also made the film like that. And uh, you have truly said that it is being hijacked by small countries like Iran, small countries in terms of mm, filmmaking. So, now, that is also the more reason how why... Much, how much would you say is our filmmakers to blame for that? I mean, do you think uh, the resource crunch and the constrictions of audience and stuff veered our filmmakers away from what hmm. could have been innovatively good cinema hmm. into something... They fell into their own trap of uh, a, a certain kind of idiom. They probably evolved their own formula of non-popular film. Well, um, basically, could you, could, you, could you spell out your question again? Yes, I mean, I want to ask you that, do you think this movement itself fell into a trap created by, again, these filmmakers only of a, a formula that they evolved, which was a formula for the non-formula films, for instance, poverty, and, uh, you know, a certain bleak depiction of India, which, even, uh, even as the artist, no? Do you think these people uh, evolved a formula of their own and, you know, the sure shot I'll get a national award if I make a film about this and, you know, if I don't have the audience. That is there. That, that is very much there. You know, they think of something else, what is going to happen to them and then. Uh, so, it, it, perhaps they think of the, of what would happen after that. And that, these are the things which, uh, which helped them in in uh, building a case for themselves. And this is what they have been doing. I think there is something wrong in it. They should, you know, when we make films, and when we have to make films for that matter, the ideal condition is that you feel that we have to make a film like that. And it doesn't matter how it works outside, how it works to the people there. You were serving your own conscience. The point is to serve your own conscience. The, sub, the point is to serve your own sensibility. This is what, if it is done like that, then perhaps we will be reaching the goal which we have been looking for. And, uh, uh, but then a lot of other factors are coming in. And that to a, to a large extent uh, has corrupted us, to a large extent. By us, you would mean the line of filmmakers that followed yes. the, the initial thrust of movement. For whom we have uh, some love and respect and on whom we could depend. This yeah. has been, I don't want to mention, I don't want to mention names, but this has happened to me. I know some quite a number of people uh, who showed their promises to start with and I don't know how they have gone into the, in, into a race which is so cantankerous. And that is what has happened with, with, with many of our... But do you think this is a corrupting influence to evolve your own formula, like I said? That like, Do you think that these people ever had a commitment to uh, poverty alleviation and stuff like that? Or do you think they used, they almost exploited these themes to uh, garner world attention and that? No, for instance, poverty yeah. is a very vital aspect of Indian reality. And poverty is so div devastating, poverty is so militant, and you can only suffer and react and do something about it. Uh, but if you start celebrating the poverty, you know, it 
some people do that, then you miss the bus. You can't do that. I'm not talking about poverty alone. I'm talking about uh, the human sensibilities. I'm talking about the human situations. Free human situation is, is in complete disarray at the moment. So if you talk about such uh, human situations in terms of cinema, well, then nothing could be better than this. And try to serve your, as I told you before, I say it again, that do justice to yourself your own that is why i said that i am you when you were primarily a, a social being how are you reacting to things around you this is very important and how you can talk about in it in terms of the medium you have to serve and how at the same time you can how at the same time you can enrich the medium as well. Uh, the, about enriching the medium, the other day we were having a chat with Nasir and he said that he, gave, he has veered into commercial cinema because uh, people, of, I mean his colleagues in uh, the non-commercial cinema or the, the art house cinema mm. uh, wanted him to perform better and better with every film but they were not making better films themselves. Do you think, do you concur with the... I know, I know his problems, I know his disappointments, and Nasir is a great artist. It, is, it goes without saying. He's a great artist, and it is also true that the, uh, that the committed filmmakers couldn't deliver the goods the way he felt uh, they should. Uh, but then again, I think there should have been a bit of... Uh, uh, thinking together, uh, perhaps they could, if, you, if they could get united and again do something about it. At a certain point of time, Nasir was very angry, very angry. He left everything. He shouldn't have left everything. It's up to him. But then, had he been there, but then at the same time, how long should he wait? Because the, the, uh, the people with, uh, the, with commitment, they when they couldn't deliver the goods. And then again, this also came out to be something like this, that, well, I'm making a low-budget film, so I have to have Nasir, and I pay him much less. But the moment, and you will see the same man will go to the other person, have, have, have a big artist who will sell very well, and he will pay him more. And this is what Nasir has seen that. Maybe, maybe, maybe these are the, there are many, many other factors. <laughs> Uh, just my people at my office wanted to basically today a, a film which is too long and too boring and too pretentious is termed as art film, not uh, confined to <laughs> this thing. How would you react to that? Well, I react when I see a bad film, I react very adversely to that. And uh, most of the films are like that. I agree with you. and. Uh, the films which are being made these days and which get awards and uh, are branded the so-called art films, I don't understand this. I don't, I, I don't accept this categorization at all. I make films, some films I make, I try to make sensible films. And other people also try to make sensible films. And th there are people who do not want to have, they don't have the sensibility. They don't have the sensibility to know what is good or what is bad. They are after money. Well, if my film makes money, well, nothing like it. That is great. But if I, if, if, even if my film doesn't get, make money, uh, heavens will not suddenly fall on my head. I keep on making films. Uh, why do we see, a, uh, we also see this in spite of the fact that these people come from film institutes and are exposed to the best of world cinema, we see a serious lack of technical finesse in uh, the, the Cinema. I'm not saying that they should be big or they should be gigantic films uh, or something, but even the small films, for instance, any of your films. I, mean, I, I, I get to a point, can, and if it is so, I know I, I can also give you instances of such films, you know, and uh, where, uh, you know, uh, that the pretension is very much there, but not much of substance not much of substance in, in, in terms of the technical quality, technical finesse we're talking about. 
Yes. Then I feel uncomfortable at such places. Then these are happening. These are happening too. And uh, having the best of education from the film institute, they come out and uh, they make a, cut a very sorry figure at times. This is what I see. And uh, there is no excuse. They can give a lot of excuses. There is no excuse. So, so what will happen? I mean, if, if, you, if you agree that there are so many problems uh, that are besetting this good Indian cinema that we uh, like to believe uh, had gathered certain momentum. But you have, I don't know, there is no solution. All that you can do, you can keep on taking chances and see. You, so you have to keep on taking chances and prosper or perish. <laughs> you have the possibilities of, of either prospering or perishing. One uh, other thing, that the grievance that uh, most of uh, filmmakers have is a lack of distribution platform. Oftentimes they say that, you know, if the distribution is to be done by the commercial uh, cinema distributors, then they weigh a film by their sensibilities and we, we don't stand a chance there. So do you think that... Not by the sensibilities, they go by the balance so, sheet. Yes, they go by the they balance, go by sheet. Their balance sheet. But if... Uh, if the state evolved a certain distribution network of small theatres across the country, uh, do you think uh, it would help? Uh, I don't know how state will uh, be of help to us in this matter, in matters of distribution. Exhibition. Uh, uh, exhibition. Because um, exhibition, exhibition, exhibition smaller hall. Uh, this is this is something which we can ourselves do. You know, if we can have because our the big theatre culture has to go. And we have to uh, be satisfied with small theatres. Now, in England, at a certain point of time, about three, four years ago, it was also like this. The, if the people do not go to cinema, let cinema come to the people. So what did they do? They, the British Film Institute did it. I mean, two or three uh, big uh, buses they organised, and uh, which could accommodate about 100 people. And there was theater everything, and the the driver was the ticket collector, the driver was the projectionist, the driver himself was also the usher. He did everything. So uh, it went to a particular mahalla, and they started showing films, important films, which are normally not shown in the big theaters. And then this way it worked, you know. Uh, but then we can try many more things. The, the big, big theatre culture has to go, otherwise there is no chance for the better films to... Why is it that when we talk of parallel cinema, it's usually in the past tense? Do you think it's dead? Hmm. Or if, it's, if it is dead, do you think it will resurrect itself? Hmm? Do you think it will resurrect itself? Will it come back? Do you think it will revive, revitalize, become alive? Or is it, is it not there at all? How to revitalize? I don't know. I, I don't myself know. But then all that I know that you have to keep on doing this. You have to find ways and means. But without depending much on the government, other than, other than funding, other than funding, because it needs to be, we need to be very professional in, in everything, in distribution, in production, in uh, the making of the films, and in exhibition, everything, we have to develop a professional attitude. And this cannot be left to the government departments. The government's business is to give us money in good faith and be off. You know, the things are to be done by the filmmakers themselves. Okay. If, if a situation arises, something like this, that the films, the films who, and the filmmakers themselves, the young filmmakers or the old filmmakers, whoever they are, if the filmmakers themselves, they build their own theatres. If they themselves, they run their houses. Something like this, nothing like it. They, it can Do be done. Do you think that will make them a little more commercially savvy also? That well, well, yes. Well, they can be in circulation. This could be possible. But then again, the, uh, you know, all around you find the big money coming up, asking you to, uh, to get into it. And this is what is being done. Now you see the young filmmakers, they're they making so much of money. Are you, are you not seeing that ad films are being made? They, I, 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 was, I, I was simply, I was thrown into an ocean of wonder when I came to know about 
a young man who gets every day for his, his uh, daily remuneration will be 10,000 rupees, 15,000 rupees, even more than that. A cameraman taking two crores of rupees, can you think of it? A cameraman is getting one crore of rupees for one film. This is unthinkable. So this has to go parallelly. So you have to have fights on many fronts. Well, if Mahajan went and made a, worked in a commercial, then I'm sure he'd get paid that kind of money. But uh, anyway, uh, so is there something that you would like to uh, suggest using this platform to the industry to, you know, like... I think if it is done so, I now look, in Calcutta I have seen, twice it, uh, they came to me young filmmakers, they came to me and they told me that uh, we are uh, building an organization called um, uh, the Forum for Better Cinema. So it, it was there in Bombay, perhaps it is there in Delhi as well. So it was there in Calcutta. They wanted to build Forum for Better Cinema. And I found also some uh, journalists also with them. I said, why do you have the journalists with you? You were the filmmakers and the journalists there to write on films. And why, how, how, how do you meet? He said, no, we have to do it together. I said, if the journalists have to, have to feel that, if the journalists feel that they have to go in for good cinema, they can build a forum of better cinema. Now, what is happening, some of the, at the back of their mind, they have to have some journalists with them, so that they, the journalist will do something for them. So, this, is, this doesn't work. Do you think those same filmmakers who make films which are self-indulgent and uh, uh, they also kind of ignore an audience that was there with them with a certain amount of commitment? You see, uh, nobody, nobody, uh, one, nobody ignores the audience. Nobody can ignore the audience. And when only when I see that the audience has ignored the um, the, the film, then only uh, they feel well. We ignore the audience too. It is not that. And then about the self-indulgent, I don't mind in a, in a country like India, in a, which is so, you know, the, what I would say, um, in a country like India where we do not want to go beyond the experiences of our predecessors. So there I think I don't mind someone becoming a self-indulgent I can allow a little bit of self-indulgence. I can allow a little bit of madness in a film. There should be a release of self-indulgence and madness in films, provided, provided these are done very intelligently. But most of the self-indulgent filmmakers I have seen, they are so, you know, so dull in a way, very dull in a way. The films are made in a way. This, I don't know if I have been able to yes, make yes, them understand what I mean. <laughs> and uh, so this is one thing I cannot stand. But in our country, we need such things. I don't mind one being very, very, uh, you know, release of madness on Indian screen is possibly necessary at times. Because then it may not be helpful for that particular film. But in the ultimate analysis, it may help you to go beyond the frontiers of cinema built by my predecessors. You have to go beyond that. So this is possible only when you can do that. You can take chances. What? Yeah. About the parliament. Yeah. I mean, new role. So what, what, how do you see your new role as a Rajya Sabha member? I mean, what would you achieve? It has been forced on me. I'm, I don't belong to any party. I don't belong to any party, so I have been nominated a member of the Rajya Sabha, and then, but I am not cut out for that. That I can clearly see. But I do not uh, despair for being in the Rajya Sabha. At times I go there, but uh, so I stay there for three, four days, and then watch people talking. And the first thing which impressed me was that the how sweetly they keep on indulging in the assault on their vocal cord. <laughs> you know, they have everything with themselves. Uh, they have a microphone, they have the switches and all. But even then, they have to shout. And this reminds me of a film by Chaplin, a great dictator, 
when Ch great dictator Mike. Hinkle started speaking and the microphone did go like this, <laughs> uh, something like this. So this is something and then I could see something though this has been a bit of uh, not politically but as a human being I feel I, 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 I need to cultivate these people. Most of the people howl too much but there are people also who I find to be very precise whom I found to be very strong but at the same time very dignified, very dignified. This is something which I have, I wish I could imbibe in myself such quality, it would have been great for me in my own area. And uh, well, I am there uh, but I don't, to be very frank, I don't get involved. I don't get involved. Uh, how, now coming back to this uh, business of cinema, uh, I have one question. Do you think the lack of audience response has something to do with the sluggishness in the movement uh, at the moment? Uh, why do you think? Sluggishness could be there. It is a, there are many factors working there, I think. And, uh, but you see that uh, everywhere, think of literature, think of painting, think of music as well. Don't you think that there is a poverty of creativity everywhere? Now, for instance, you, uh, if we talk about the films made in Hollywood, when you see a Spielberg film, I sit up and take very respectful note of the tremendous advances of science and technology. But then what do I see? I see magic. I don't get any aesthetic delight out of that. This is where I feel very, very disappointed. You see that. And whereas you find some of the filmmakers, in the independent filmmakers in the United States, uh, perhaps they are based mostly in New York or elsewhere, and they have been making very beautiful films. And even in Hollywood, very good films are made. I mean, the films of my choice. So what, uh, why uh, then, like, don't you see that happening in India, that certain pockets? It in should happen, and I'm sure it will happen. This is a, I think all this is a passing phase. All this is a passing phase and things will come. And uh, we are in a somewhat in a void. It is quite apparent from the fact, look at, the, look at politics here. Pol don't you think that it is all void? This is a, 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 a very big crisis is eating into the very vitality of Indian politics. Don't you see that? You know, when uh, uh, this uh, the emptiness, void, that is there. And, uh, and when you see something somewhere, it reflects on other things as well. Politically, we are in a very bad shape, very bad shape. I'm talking politically as in terms of philosophy. And uh, so, you know, perhaps it reflects on other things as well. Okay. Thank you, sir.